Hello, everyone. Welcome to St. Michael's Church here on Hamilton Mountain. I'm the Reverend John Forbes. I'm glad you're here today. We begin with the Gospel, of course, St. Luke in chapter 24. Today's reading begins with verse 36. And while the disciples were talking about Jesus, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. Well, they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? Well, they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. This, my friends, is the gospel of Christ. Well, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I, I wonder, wonder if you, um, you know, with all of your life's experience, things that you've accomplished, places you've been, the things you've read, I wonder if you still struggle to put the Bible into practice. I mean, we are reasonably intelligent. We're supported by a community of believers, and I think most of us have good intentions, but here we are, often, feeling less than, because we haven't quite figured it out yet. Well, this was a question raised in our Bible study this past week online, and I responded by sort of blathering on about the influence of the media in our lives, how we're distracted by so many things, by so much of the world around us. It's no wonder we have a hard time putting the Bible into practice. Well, after I slept on it for a little while, I woke up in the middle of the night, the witching hour, my grandmother used to say, and I thought of a better answer. You see, the Bible is not just some sort of manual that we need to memorize in order to live rightly. It's a collection of stories and wisdom that it is meant for us to engage with. It's God's story written for us. And the right living of the Christian is not in getting it right, but in the struggle that we engage with this one who created us, redeemed us, and ultimately proves to the next generation that life is worth living to the fullest in Jesus Christ. I mean... I think that God does want us to get it right. The law and the prophets, the Proverbs, the Psalms, the Gospels, the testimonies of those that come after us all point us in the right direction. But the life of Christ that is ours to live faithfully, we do it our best when we come together. See, faith is something that thrives and grows best in the context of a community like this one. 
Well, let's not forget that it is still Easter. It's the great 50 days. An excuse to still eat chocolate for breakfast? Maybe. Maybe not. But a celebration nonetheless. We shift this week from John's telling of the locked doors and the doubting of Thomas to Luke's story about the resurrection, which is ongoing. This week, Jesus finds himself on the road to Emmaus. He reappears again and again to the disciples. And he wonders, we wonder, will they remain behind the locked doors in fear or will they go back to what they were doing before? Or <laughs> will they get on with the vision that Jesus has, pre has prepared them for? Well, it's a question that we, the church, should always be answering. We must remember, of course, that the Gospel of Luke is written so that we may believe, and in so doing, become transformed. And while I think most of us listening in today do believe, I am not sure that we understand what it means to be transformed. And even if we have somehow figured that out, how do we show others the truth of the matter? See, in the gospel story, we see the disciples who have been converted. They are faithful, but they're wandering. It's post-Easter. Wondering how the world is a better place. What makes it different now that Jesus is gone? A question that I've heard from many in this day and age. Is Jesus even relevant anymore? Well, as they do, Jesus becomes present to them. Once again, he shows up physically to be with them. He engages with the disciples and they don't recognize him. We don't know why. It may be their sadness or their sorrow prevents them from seeing who is with them, just as Mary missed out until Jesus called her name. There are many priorities in our lives that prevent us from seeing Jesus. Too many things that we give our time and energy to. What's in the response to this blind eye that Jesus does what he does best? He opens up the story. He retells it to them from creation all the way to Emmaus. In the breaking of the bread and in his very presence with them, their eyes are open to recognize that the anointed one is right here in front of us. And then in classic Jesus style, well, he vanishes. But they are not alone. They never really were. The travelers on the road move quickly to tell others, the Messiah is not dead, he lives. And this new mission which they have received is not theirs to carry alone. The Holy Spirit is coming to help with this work, which we as the church continue. As Christians, we read the stories of the Bible not as a prescription for better living. We read them in the midst of our own lives, the ones that we live on our own roads to Emmaus. We struggle together and invite Jesus to be present in our midst, whether we're behind locked doors on the road or somewhere else. We seek the knowledge that Jesus shares, that we are the people that follow the resurrected one. So whatever is distracting you these days, I encourage you to see Jesus in the midst of your lives, in your work for justice, caring for the widows and orphans, in your work to put food on the table, feeding the ones we love with energy and nourishment, in your joyful work and play to relieve the stress of living in the midst of pandemics, in your work to care for the ones that you love, and miss and need. Well, most of us know what is expected of us. We live our lives in some sort of helpful routine, but I wonder how often we think to break out of it in order to do life better. And so I challenge you to do something that the disciples on the road to Emmaus did this week as the disciples did as they encountered Jesus again. 
see Jesus. Eyes wide open, look for the risen Lord. How many times will you see God's grace every day, every hour? And in the midst of all the things that are going on, well, let me know how it's going. For Jesus is risen. Indeed. Amen. And Alleluia.